I am at the seven card stud table and I'm going to deal one hand and demonstrate the proper procedure for dealing this game. I'm going to start from the very beginning with the manual shuffle. The manual shuffle, again, three to four seconds long. Pick up the cards and they always face towards the players. One finger motion to bring the cards down even with the deck. Place my cover card no more than three to four inches in front of my deck because we don't want to travel with the cut as I demonstrated before. Cut the deck in half, lace through the cards lightly, prominent V, and square. Box the deck, one, two, three, four. Shuffle twice. I am not going to cut my deck at this time. I am going to ask the players to post their ante. How do I know a player has to post an ante? I am looking at my sign when I come into the box, and I am presently dealing 5, 10, 7 card stud, and this game requires that every player post an ante. So at this time I'm going to request antes from all players. Antes, please. I'm going to reach over and play it. I am using washers in place of 50 cents because we don't have the 50 cent checks on the table. I'm going to divide my table in half and I'm going to use my left hand to collect the antes on the left side and my right hand to collect the antes on the right side. I have two players so my pot is correct. I have one dollar in the pot. I am now going to cut at least ten cards from the top of the deck and start my pitch. Remember to hold the deck at a 45 degree angle in your hand and the thumb lightly takes the card off the top of the deck. Down pitch. The players will receive two cards down and one card up. On this street, I am on 3rd Street. How do I know we're on 3rd Street? Because the players have three cards, one, two, three. It's called 3rd Street. I am looking for the force bet. What is the force bet? The force bet is the lowest card on the board, and the player must post that force bet when he, is, he or she is the lowest on the board. In this case, it is the three of hearts. I am going directly to the three of hearts and announce, three of hearts, you're low. At this point, the player knows that he is low, he or she, and must post the force bet. bet. The player has the option on this street to bet the force bet of $2. Again, how do I know it's $2? It's because the sign tells me so. So the player has the option to bet $2 on this street. And that is the minimum bet this player can place. Or, if the player's hand is extremely strong, he has the option to go right to the structure. And the structure of, uh, on this street is $5. In this situation, let's play with the player just betting the minimum bet, and it's a bet of $2. The next player can fold, he can call the $2, or this player can also bet the structure, which is $5. In this case, let's assume the player is betting $5. He likes his hand. He thinks it's a little stronger than the three of hearts. At this point, we are no longer at the $2 bet. We have now gone to the completion of this bet. You must announce complete on this street, which means that a player can now start raising after we get to the completion of the bet. So we are now at the structure. It's called complete. I'll go to the next player and ask the player three more to call. And the player opts to bet five. He will call the five dollars. All right, again with my left hand, I'll bring in the, the bets with my left hand on the left side, the right hand, right side. At this point, I have to know exactly how much is in my pot because, as I stated in the beginning, the house makes the money by the rate collection during each deal. And then this sign tells me the house will collect 10% up to $4. So I have $11 in the pot. So 10% of $11 is $1.10. But we don't have quarters, dimes, and nickels on the table in 5, 10, 7 card stud. So we need to round down. At this time, I will check change. This is called check change. When the checks go from high to low, I will check change one nickel and bring out five whites from the rack. 
it's this for that, and then bring the $5 into the rack. I will then take $1 for the rake and place the remaining money in the pot. I am ready to deal the next card. Tap. What does tapping mean when the dealer taps the table? It means the betting round is over and I'm ready to begin a new betting round. Tap. Hold the deck close down to the felt. Please make sure not to hold it high and expose the burn cards. Remember the deck is always held face down on a 45 degree angle. So we'll tap, we'll burn, and the money must go on the cards, underneath the cards. I don't want to see, if you can, with the, with the burn card all by itself. Please make sure that it's protected by placing it under pot money. I am ready to deliver fourth street card and it's up in seven card stud. On this street, I am looking for the high hand of the two cards that the players have. I am on 4th Street now. How, how do I know again? The players have four cards. So now I am on 4th Street and I am looking for the high hand, which is the king. I'm going to go directly to the king and ask the king if he wants to check or bet. On this street, the players have the option to check, whereas on 3rd Street, the force bet does not have that option. On 4th Street, I'll go to the player, King of Diamonds, you're high, you must know poker terminology, we'll ask the player, check or bet. Check means the player does not want to bet. Bet means he will take that option. In this case, the player will bet $5. The next player has the option to fold, to call the $5, or raise. In this case, let's say the player just wants to call. The player will call. The betting is complete. My left hand, I will take my left hand and bring the checks into the middle. My right hand, I will do the same thing on the right side. At this point, how much is in my pot? It is now $21. So 10% of 21 is $2.10 again, but the house will always round down because we don't have quarters, dimes, and nickels. So I will just take one more dollar because I already have one in the rake circle. So now the house has two dollars in the circle. Again, the dealer will tap, burn, and turn the fifth street card up. If you notice, there is a pair of fours on the board. When a pair lands on the board, the dealer must announce it immediate, um, immediately to let all the other players know what's on the board. So I need to announce pair of fours nice and loud so everyone can hear me. Continuing with the deliverance of the fifth street card, so at this point, I will go back to the pair of fours because we are still on the high hand. Pair of fours, you're high, check or bet. On fifth street, the betting begins with the big bet and it's $10 in this round. So the pair of fours say checks. I will go to the next player and say check or bet. This player opts to bet $10. I'll go back to the pair of fours and say pair of fours, 10 to call. And I need to know if he wants to call, fold, or raise. If he puts out $10, he is just calling the bet. With my left hand, I'll bring in the bet. With my right hand, I'll bring in the bet. At this point, I am over $40 in my pot. I don't have to count anymore, but I do need to take two more dollars. And now, my rate collection is complete. How do I know that? Because the sign tells me that the house will take 10% up to $4 and no more than $4. To, to begin, tap, burn. I am now delivering or pitching the 6th Street card to the players. I am again looking for the high hand and it's still the pair of fours. I'll go back to the fours and announce, pair of fours, you're still high, check or bet. At this point, let's say the player wants to bet $10. I'll go to the Queen of Spades, it's 10 to call, and this player opts to bet $10. My left hand, I'll take in the left side with my, of the bets with my left hand, and the right side with my right hand. I am going to deliver the 7th Street card. The 7th Street card is down in stud. Tap, burn, down. At this point I'm going to drop my deck because I am finished delivering the cards. 
I'm going to protect it with the cover card that's underneath just in case I have to use this again. And the deck or the stub will be put on the right hand side. I again go back to the pair of fours and announce, fours, you're high, check or bet. The fours want to bet. The maximum bet the, the fours can bet is $10. And let's go to the queen. The pair of fours bet 10, queen, do you want to call or raise? The player will call. I'll collect the bets, left hand, left side, right hand, right side. I don't have to take any more rake. Like I said, I'm at the max collection, according to the sign, 10% to $4. At this time, I will ask players for showdown. Showdown means the players need to expose all of their down cards. I'm going to reach over for demonstrational purposes only, because when the, the dealer asks the players to showdown, the dealer can never, ever reach over and do that himself. So just for demonstration purposes, I need to turn over these cards. What we are looking for here is the high hand. We are looking for the five best cards in this player's hand. And here we need to announce, I'm going to announce the player's hand. It's two pair, kings and queens with an ace. Whenever you have two pair, you always announce the highest pair first. The next player needs to show down. And again, I'm only doing this for demonstrational purposes. I am not allowed to reach over and turn up the player's down cards. The player must do that himself. And all seven cards must be exposed. The high hand for this player is ace high. But the five best cards will be the ace, the queen, the jack, the nine, and the six. If you know your rankings, and I hope you do at this time, you know that two pair beats a high card. So I'm going to take the losing hand. I gave this player seven cards, and I'm making sure I'm taking in seven. And I do have seven cards. I'm going to place them in the muck, but I have to create the muck. And it goes on the left-hand side of the dealer. The muck is always messy. It is never neat. I'm going to now push the pot to the winning hand. I'm just going to push the player's cards over. And with two hands, push the pot to the player. Collect his cards. Make sure I'm taking in seven, and I have seven. And I'm going to put them in the, in the muck. At this point, I'd like to explain these three important features right here. You must always have three separate piles at the end of your deal. The muck, the burn, and the stub.